Yo, I'm Matthew Kingpin. In this video, I'll be providing you all with a succinct how-to guide to committing <clears throat> freedom in Counter-Strike 2. There's nothing more rewarding than making a little chaos on the attacking side, so I'm going to show you all just how it's done. This video will cover the basics of T-Side and some tips that have helped me be a more effective counter-counter-terrorist in CS2. Without further ado, let's teach these dogs a lesson. So what exactly is the objective of terrorism in Counter-Strike? The objective of terrorism is to kill them all. Or detonate the bomb, you know. T's cannot simply sit around and wait. They must be the ones going out, making plays, and getting things done. In order to do that, you need guns, bombs, and a lot of cunning and skill. The third thing I can't help you with, the second I'll elaborate on eventually, but that first thing, I've got your back. Let's explain. To those of you who watched the first video I made detailing how CT side is played, you might remember the economy as being the primary driver behind what weapons you buy and when you buy them, and the same is somewhat true on T side. Generally, you only want to be full buying weapons when you can afford armor, particularly full armor, a rifle, and some nades. However, T side things are not all they seem. For starters, T-side buys are quite a bit more malleable in terms of effectiveness because of how terrorists can adapt and change their strategy and which bomb site they would like to attack on the fly, even in the middle of an already started round. Unless you're, well, let's just call them unhelpful, STUPID, terrorist friend decides they'd like to plant the bomb directly in a CT's loving embrace, there's nothing forcing T-side to attack a certain position or commit to a certain spot. This also means that buying weapons on the T-side is a lot more flexible in terms of what can actually bring your team that oh-so-coveted freedom. The attacking side is all about keeping CTs on the back foot at all times, and thankfully there are lots of options, some of which are quite cheap to boot, that are perfect for running headlong into a bomb site and brutally snatching it away from beleaguered CT-side players. The AK-47 is an absolute monster of a rifle and great at just about everything. It's literally designed to scare the CT bros away. But if the $4,000 plus dollars it costs to buy it, full armor, and some nades is too steep for you, there are other, less pricey, options that are quite effective as well. The MAC-10 is a run-and-gun beast that's perfect for flying around a close corner and decimating a defender's dome. The Galil, unlike CT Side's notoriously crappy budget rifle, is actually a decent alternative to the AK that comes in at only two-thirds the price of the titular Kalishnikov. The Tech 9 is even a viable purchase on full buys sometimes. An almost hilariously strong pistol that can accurately one-tap an enemy player at close range even with a helmet while running at full speed. There are times that you should elect to save on T-Side for sure, and thankfully saving on T-Side does actually guarantee at least a decent buy on the following round, unlike certain other sides of play. But thankfully, there is a built-in YouTube money-making scam video right there in the palm of a terrorist's hands at the start of every round. It's time to go get that money. Let's talk about the bomb. So what exactly is the bomb? Other than myself, of course. The explosive little devil is the cornerstone of T-Side's advantages in Counter-Strike. What does the bomb allow you to do, and how do you use it most effectively to win as many rounds as you can? The famous CSIED first and foremost always guarantees, even in the most suboptimal of round start scenarios, at worst a purely fair fight in terms of man advantage with what bomb site terrorists can choose to attack. Since there are only two places to defend for CTs, and Ts only have to go to one of those two, I'm no mathematician or anything, but 5 is a greater number than 2.5. And a lot of maps even have a very highly contestable middle area further dividing CT side strength. Securing one of the bomb sites and planting the bomb is generally a T side player's number one priority. Now a more seasoned player might be saying, I thought T side's greatest advantage was their superior and cheaper weapon choices. And they would be right. The bomb can be used to expedite the acquisition of these superior weapons though through a mechanic known as a plant bonus. When terrorists plant the bomb, if they are unable to defend the bomb site afterwards and secure the round win, they are awarded an extra bit of bonus money for managing to get the explosive primed at all. At $800 per player, this dubiously delegated dose of dosh goes a long way towards bringing extra pain to the CT side. Improvising the explosive's delivery to one of the opposing team's guarded zones is a key to keeping the pressure on and the round winds flowing. As for what's next, do you remember how I said I couldn't help you with the skill and cunning part of the equation? I lied. Let's get into it. 
So you've got yourself, an AK-47, the Sploder, and some big, strong mus- uh, uh, I mean grenades. What do I do now, is something you may be asking. First and foremost, the bomb is your baby. It is your lifeblood as a terrorist, so make sure it is protected and kept out of sight of the CT side as much as possible. Give it to someone who is trustworthy. No. And or just keep it away from the action as long as possible. A bomb dropped to the enemy team is oftentimes a death sentence for a T-side round, so keep it secret and keep it safe. Second, try to make sure you're varying up where you're attacking, especially if things aren't working out with your approach. It's okay to abandon a plan that doesn't look like it's going to work out and rotate to attacking a different area or even a different bomb site entirely. And even if a play is working out successfully and consecutively, the CT side might eventually hard counter you, so mix things up to prevent CT side from figuring out your playstyle. Third, just be better, honestly. Actually third, any tactic that wins the game, no matter how silly it may seem, might just be what you need to break a streak of CT wins. Unless you are playing very high level face it or pro level players, everyone has a weakness in their skill set. And by a weakness, I mean a lot. Finding the weaknesses of the enemy team takes multiple rounds of experimentation at times. Don't give up poking around and seeing where the enemy team is deficient just because they're currently on a roll. Fourth, as is with CT side, your teammates can be very useful to you, either as comrades or as bait. Play together with your team and try to work with and off of them. Even if a teammate whiffs, oftentimes that's an opportunity to trade them and turn their failure into a success. If someone is trying to get something done, don't just stand around and wait for them to die. As long as it's not an absolute peanut brain idea like running through Inferno Banana with three Molotovs down and more flaming patches than a furry convention, try assisting your teammates in their plays. That's about everything I have to say for this production. I wanted to make this video, well, partially because I made the opposite one already, but also because I really want new players to grasp the wider overarching concepts of the game before they look deep into the nitty gritty of specific plays, positions, or tactics. If a newbie engages with why they are doing what they are doing as opposed to just the what's, i.e. doing things for the sake of because a guy told them to, it helps them actually want to learn new things as opposed to just being forced to learn new things. As always, please give me any and all feedback you have on this video and any others I've made. It is all read and appreciated deeply. Burn your dread, and that's all! Oh my god. Can you pass that flash sure. along down to yellow? Alright. Yes! Everybody <laughs> touched it! <laughs> Wonderful! Thank you, boys.